Okay, welcome back to part three of the wheel colliders. Did you figure out what the issue was with your colliders and your wheel meshes? Well, in our code, let's just have a look here. What we're doing is we've got this single game object, right? And it's got a collider on it and it's also got the mesh. Now we want to get the colliders position and use it to reposition the mesh. Now what that's doing is it's also changing the position of the actual game object itself. Therefore, the whole system is moving and relating back and forward and kind of recursively updating its position on itself and therefore it sort of can't cope and gives you that unrealistic behavior. So what we need to do is separate out the wheels and the actual mesh. Okay, so let's go into our hierarchy and you want to get each wheel. Now, I'm just going to rename these wheels. Okay, so this is, let's see, that's our front right wheel. So let's call this front right and I'll call it front right collider. Then the next one is going to be our back right collider then this one is our back left collider and this one is our front left collider now we're going to select the car and right click create an empty on it and let's call this colliders and then attach all of those colliders to that empty game object so they're all together now select the car right click and we're going to again create another empty and in here we will call this our wheels which is in fact our meshes so you want to actually grab all of those colliders remember they're not just colliders i got the mesh on them as well Control d to duplicate them all and then drag them out of there and attach them to the wheels then we're going to go through and just rename them from a C on the end to put a M on the end so we know it's the mesh and then put in mesh and this one here. Okay, now we have the colliders and we have the wheels. So all of the collider objects, you can get rid of the mesh renderer and your mesh filter that are on those. So we just go through here. Let me bring this in so you can see what's going on the screen. Just near that little cogwheel, just go and remove it from there and remove that component from there. So you get rid of both of them. And if you shift select those three, you can do that for all of them at once. Remove component and remove component. And then for the wheels, select all of those, but get rid of the wheel colliders, remove, and get rid of the drive script, remove. So the drive script is just left with the collider because it's basically moving the collider, but we really, it also has to move your mesh. So we're going to edit that code. Go into your drive script, and at the top, we're going to create a public for our game object to pass through the mesh object. So game object, let's call it um, wheel. Now down in the go, instead of this dot transform dot position, it will be wheel. So wheel dot transform dot position and wheel dot transform dot rotation. All right, so save that. Now we want to go back in the inspector and click on your first collider. So this is your front right one. And you'll see a spot where you can put your wheel. So you want to put your front right mesh down into that spot there. Then you want to do the same for all of the others so that they have access to their meshes as separate objects. Now what this is going to mean is when you rotate one thing, so the collider, you can rotate the mesh, but they're not doing that feedback loop sort of thing that we had going on before. 
So now we're ready to try this out. Press play and let's see what happens. Okay, did you notice? Well, how can you not notice what's going on with the wheels? So they've um, become really weirdly scaled as they rotate around. And that's because if you go and have a look at your wheels and just select the meshes, you will see that they are scaled. Now you might have a different scale to me in the Z, depending on how you resize them. But um, that is basically because of the actual car body itself. Let's just take a look at the wheels to see what the problem is. If you look at the wheels, they have a scale on them. Now the car body itself has a scale because it was a cube and we resized it. And because we made the wheels and the colliders children of the car, we ended up with the issue uh, that the scaling gets translated through the whole structure to all of the children. And so although the wheels look nice there, they're actually scaled by 0.45 in my case in the Z direction, which means that the rotation, which is affected by the scaling is going to go a little bit skew if, as you can see. So how do we fix that? Well, we need to restructure the way that we have our car. First of all, create an empty. Now this will be called our car parent. Now grab hold of your car and attach it to your car parent. Now what you wanna do is get your actual wheels and take them away from the car, but attach them to the parent so that they're on the same level. Now your collider is still on the car body. Your colliders are all here and my colliders themselves. If you just select yours, you can actually set that to one in the Z. It doesn't really make much difference. It doesn't affect the wheel collider itself. And then if we have a look at the wheels, they're still a little oddly shaped at least with the scale, even though they don't look it on the screen. If we click on wheel, which is their empty parent we created before, over in the scale, you see it got scaled as well. So we need to make that one again. Then you wanna to go to each of your wheels and set the scale for that to one as well. Now, your wheels will of course move, but the code is going to pop the wheels into place. So uh, yes, you could select each wheel and just move it out if you so wish to do this, just to be, I guess, a bit more perfect so your car looks right from the get-go. Let's put that out there like that. Okay, so let's just go through this again with all of this scaling. The car parent is empty and is scaled 111. The car and the wheels, so the car, which is your car body, let me just rename that car body, is scale to whatever you need it to be. It has the rigid body on it. Attached to the car body are your colliders. The colliders require a rigid body in a parent, so therefore it's that. The scaling of the car body has no effect whatsoever on the wheels because they're no longer a child of the car body. They're actually down here. The we empty wheels object is scaled 111 and therefore all our meshes are now scaled 111. Okay, let's press play and have a look at the result. And now we have a working vehicle. Great. So that is the structure that you need to put your car in. Before we continue, I just want to emphasize the importance of getting these wheel colliders lined up with your actual wheels. So in this one here, um, you can see that I have lined up the wheel. So this is the circle around the collider and it fits my wheel. Well, pretty much fits my wheel. What happens if we now shrink this collider here? So if I grab those wheel colliders 
and let's take the radius and put it down just a little bit so let's type something in it might be a little bit easier to do something like that what do you think is going to happen when I press play so when I press play it's going to sink the tire into the ground up to the point where the collider hits the surface so throughout all of this remember that whenever you put your colliders on your wheels always always check that they are the correct size if they're too big then the wheel is going to float above the ground so let's just have a look at that change our radius to 0 0.5 and press play there you can now see that they're sitting above the ground and if they're too small obviously it will sink into the ground so they're 0 0.35 I think I had them at mm, you could go a little bit smaller than that and then realign them this can get out of alignment when you start attaching things and moving around and scaling things so just check that they are all correctly lined up when you create them uh, initially otherwise you will get issues where things aren't quite performing correctly and it's usually always because of the wheel colliders. Now we're going to move on to turning the wheels. So let's go back into our drive script and at the top with the torque we actually want to pass through the maximum amount of steering that's possible. So float max steer angle and we'll equal that to say 30 degrees okay that we can turn left or right now we will go down into the update and we will use our horizontal axis to get our steering value so that's going to be the left and right arrow keys I'll just copy this and create s float s and this will be horizontal like that now go will pass through the steering into there as well then up in the go method we'll make allowances for that so float steer now when that comes through we want to clamp it as well so let's just copy this line paste it in and change our acceleration here to steering or steer I should say steer and then steer and then we want to multiply that by our maximum steering so we could just put that up into here multiply by max steer angle now where do we actually apply the steering well we apply it to the wheel collider okay so under here where we are applying the torque we will also go wc dot steer angle equals steer like that so what we're creating here is essentially a four wheel steering situation where all of the wheels because remember all of the wheels have this code on it but this will show you at least how it works so save that let's go back into unity now you want to select all of your colliders and down in the maximum steer you've got 30 so that's where you can actually change it if you want it to be smaller or larger but it's 30 for now that'll that'll do fine okay so we're all ready to go so press play and now when we use the side arrow keys check out those wheels and what I'm going to do is just rotate around here as well so we can see both sides and I might just move the light so that we can see it a bit more clearly as well okay there it is so now let's just turn and you can see that all the wheels are turning in the exact same direction what would happen if we actually had our wheel so over in this case these ones here that are pretty much inside out because we just copied them and moved them across if we select this wheel here you can see that the x-axis is facing out that way on here for this wheel the x-axis is facing out that way again which is fine 
when the wheel is backwards but in this case we probably don't want it to be I mean if you create your own car for example so what I want to do with those particular wheels let me just turn the light off in here so we can see what we're working with and move this over I'm just going to grab that wheel which seems to be there and let's hit E to rotate let's just rotate that wheel around so it's sitting like around there okay so that would make it if we go over into the inspector we can see that it's Y rotation is negative 174 let's just make it nice neat negative 180 and now let's press play and because the see it's popped around automatically for us anyway because the code in the drive is going to align this the rotation of it with the collider that it belongs to which is that one there so it doesn't even matter if we turn it around it's still going to be aligned and then the steering is just still going to work in both directions so in this case what you do in fact need to do is have separate models for the tires that are on each side because they are in fact different models they're facing in different directions we're going to move on to use actual models of cars and the tires will be facing in opposite directions but we'll still have that x-axis facing the right way which means that they will turn just keep that in mind in case you ever create a car system in which your tires don't seem to want to turn the right way so the only thing left to do is actually test what it's like to drive this thing around which should be whoa a bit weird <laughs> fairly maneuverable because of the fact that it has this four-wheel steering system like that yeah okay so that is pretty much all of the physics set up for our car now just before we move on to the next lecture we're going to refactor our code so I'm going to leave it for you as a challenge what I would like you to do is to take this drive code so remember the drive code is on all of these wheels we want to take it off and we want that to be on the parent the car parent here so the code's going to stay pretty much the same but you're going to have to pass through all of the colliders and all of the wheels then what I want you to do is to make this car a front wheel turning car so just grab the two front wheels and have those turn all right, so I'll come back in the next video and explain the whole process. But before then, you give that a go at refactoring the code, removing it from all of those wheels. So there's only sort of one instance of that C sharp drive script and it's going to be sitting on the car parent. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.